the road and would they come from Lagos? How we would say they survive? Many people have died because of this bad road. Look at it. Most trailers have claimed lives. This is the usual lamentation by commuters and motorists plying the busy Benin Wari Highway. The road is in a state of disrepair, making articulated vehicles fall daily at various points. When it rains, this portion at Ologbo, which is close to the boundary between Edo and Delta states, is a no-go area. These 40 heavy-duty vehicles are completely blocking this lane. Man, this thing is pathetic. I think for the past three hours, we only covered at only two kilometers. The high volume of vehicular movement on the other available lane has caused this traffic that stretches several kilometers. Commuters and motorists who could not bear the long wait had to resort to trekking or using commercial motorcycles to leave the area. So far, where would they suffer for this road? It's too much. Imagine me now carry picking for back. Hey, two of us go enter one back. One thousand naira for one back to reach Olobo. Since morning, since what a bad load now. Load will leave for market. It is a race against time for the owners of these trapped vehicles as they struggle to get off the mud to reduce the traffic caused by them. But when respite will come, remains a mirage. Hawking of drugs on the street is a common sight in most cities in Nigeria. The general instruction has always been that drugs are to be kept in cold, dry place. But when they are hawked on the streets, the drugs are exposed to direct sun ray, and these may turn the drugs to harmful products. They are medical products, they are chemical products. When they are subjected to unfavorable conditions, they get decomposed. They get deteriorated. And instead of doing the work that is supposed to do in the body, it will do otherwise. Also been discovered that some people misapply chemicals on farm produce, especially grains, while some bakers still engage in the use of harmful bromate for the production of bread. If you take closely a close look at the national health care policy, at the heart of the cardinal objective of the national health care policy is prevention of illnesses. And if you want to prevent illnesses, then knowledge, information, dissemination and communication is very paramount. This explains why stakeholders cutting across various social strata and age groups are gathered in this hall for this sensitization program. In 2015, the National Assembly passed the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. But this important piece of legislation is only applicable in the Federal Capital Territory. This is because even though it was passed by the National Assembly, it was only localized in the FCT. Presently, a number of states have also passed their versions of this act as it relates to women and girls. Violence against women and girls is one of the most widespread, persistent and devastating human rights violations in the world today. It threatens the right every woman and girl is entitled to. Good morning, At this gathering, participants are worried that the numbers keep increasing. 2020, it wasn't just about the case of the young Owa that was killed, but we had so many other reports of young girls, babies, older women, even boys who were sexually abused, who lost their lives to sexual violence, or even victims or survivors of gender-based violence. Because with the lockdown, we saw an increase in reports of abuse. They have identified what they believe is the principal obstacle to ratifying the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And this is a lack of coordinated advocacy, low public awareness and prevailing cultural beliefs. 